Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Shelly, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make my delicious homemade sweet potato pie squares from scratch. All this is is a sweet potato pie turned into squares. It has a thin layer of pie crust and a thick layer of sweet potato pie filling. It serves up to about 15 or more people depending on how you slice it. Now the good thing is is that this recipe can serve more people versus what you would get out of a regular sweet potato pie baked in a nine inch deep dish pie pan, okay? Now I do have another version of sweet potato pie squares. It has a thin layer of pie crust and a thin layer of sweet potato pie filling. And I'll have the links to that recipe video in the description box. So without further ado, let's get started. Here is all what you will need to make your sweet potato pie squares. Let's get started with our ingredients. You will need three large to medium sized sweet potatoes. And along with that, you will need two large eggs at room temperature, one 12 fluid ounce can of evaporated milk, sugar, all purpose flour, salt, unsalted butter, cold, and butter flavored vegetable shortening. Now, if you don't have this, you can use the regular flavor vegetable shortening as well. For your flavorings, you will need some vanilla extract and optional lemon extract. Now I hear that some people like to add lemon into their sweet potato pies. So I've added this as an optional ingredient if you want to use it. And along with that, you will need some cinnamon, nutmeg, and allspice. To bake your sweet potato pie squares, you will need some parchment paper and a nine by 13 inch deep dish metal pan. And for your tools, you will need a food processor. Now, if you don't have this, you will need a sturdy pastry cutter. And lastly, you will need a rolling pin. And there you have it. All right, let's get straight to it. So in our food processor, we're gonna add two cups of all-purpose flour. And to that, we're gonna add four tablespoons of sugar and one fourth teaspoon of salt. Now I'm going to just go ahead and cover this and I'm just going to uh, pulse this about three times to make sure it's nice and incorporated. Alright, that looks good. Now we're going to add six tablespoons of unsalted butter cold and six tablespoons of butter flavor vegetable shortening cold. Okay, I'm going to just cover this and I'm just going to pulse this until that sh butter and shortening is cut into the flour. Shouldn't take no more than about one to two minutes, all right? And this is how it looks when we're done. Now we're gonna go ahead and transfer our flour mixture into a large bowl. We're gonna add one third cup of cold water. And I'm just gonna go ahead and give this a quick stir. And as you can see here, our mixture has started to come together. That's exactly what we want. Now I'm gonna take my hands and I'm just gonna form this into a dough. And this is how it looks when we're done. Just gonna knead it a couple of times. Nice and soft, looks good. Now we're going to go ahead and wrap this with some plastic wrap and we're going to uh, place this into our refrigerator for about 30 minutes, okay? All right, here we have our baking pan. We're just gonna spread butter along the bottom and the sides of the baking pan. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and take some uh, parchment paper and we're just going to add that into the baking pan as evenly as possible. Now we're going to go ahead and take some scissors and we're just going to cut down in all four corners of the parchment paper and just put that into the baking pan to make sure that it fits. As you can see here, I have an example right here. I'm just cutting down the, on the edge and I'm just inserting that into the baking pan. So that way it fits in there perfectly as you see here. All right. Now you want to take some scissors and you want to trim off any excessive parchment paper, all right? Now we're going to lightly flour the surface of our table, just as you see here. Now you're going to add the dough on top of the table and you're just going to take your hands and you're going to press that dough down and form a flat circle. All right, now you're going to take some flour and place it on top of the dough and place it onto your rolling pin as well. And now you're going to uh, roll the dough out into a large thin rectangle as you see here it doesn't have to be perfect or anything like that now you want to make sure you take your time with it be patient 
and this is how it looks when we're done now as long as the dough is larger than your baking pan then that's perfect it's good to go now we're going to go ahead and take a knife and we're going to cut a 9 by 13 inch rectangle the same size as your baking pan as you see here and you move off any excessive pieces of dough and now what we're going to do is we're just going to roll the dough onto the rolling pin now as you're rolling the dough onto the rolling pin you take some flour and you add it onto the dough so that way the dough won't stick onto itself now you're going to take your rolling pin and just roll the dough onto the inside of your baking pan and from there just take your hand and just stretch the dough out so that way it can reach all sides of the baking pan all right and once done you're going to take this and place this into your freezer now you're going to go ahead and preheat your fire to medium high heat all right, here we have about two and a half quarts of water into this large pot. We're going to let this come to a simmer. All right, our water is at a simmer now. Now we're going to go ahead and add our sweet potatoes. Now, if you don't want to boil your sweet potatoes, I have another step for you coming up next. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and cover this. And we're going to let this simmer for one hour and 20 minutes or until the sweet potatoes are tender. Now, if you want to bake your sweet potatoes. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, preheat my oven to 375 degrees now you're going to take your sweet potatoes make sure you place them in a baking pan and line that baking pan with aluminum foil place them into a preheated 375 degree oven and bake them for one hour and 20 minutes now once done you're going to take your sweet potatoes and you're going to remove them out of the oven now, as you can see i have four sweet potatoes but we're not using this for this recipe it's just for demonstration purposes all right now to tell if the sweet potatoes are done you can insert a fork or a knife and it comes in and out clean it's done so let them cool completely all right it's been about an hour and 20 minutes for boiling our sweet potatoes and again if you insert a fork or a knife into each sweet potato and it comes in and out clean it's done now we're going to go ahead and turn our fire off now we're going to go ahead and take some tongs and we're just going to remove these sweet potatoes out of the pot and from there we're just going to place them into a medium sized bowl and from there you just let the sweet potatoes cool completely all right our sweet potatoes have cooled now you can uh, take your hands and you can remove the skins off of the sweet potatoes or if not you can use a butter knife to help as well all right and you want to do this to all three sweet potatoes just as you see here we've added our peeled sweet potatoes into a large bowl now we're going to take a large spoon and we're going to mash these sweet potatoes until they're nice and smooth i gotta get me a potato masher because <laughs> i had one before but it broke all right now to mix this we're going to be using a hand mixer and you will also need a spatula as well all right now we're going to remove the strings from the sweet potatoes so we're going to insert the mixer and we're just going to mix this on high speed and from there we're just going to remove the blades from the sweet potatoes and as you can see here the strings are on the blades of the mixer so now at this time you're going to rinse off the strings off of the blades and don't worry i have something in my drain to catch the uh strings to the sweet potatoes so don't worry about that it's not going down the drain or nothing all right now you're going to go ahead and scrape down the sides of your bowl and you're going to repeat the same method and you're going to continue to do this about six times or until the strings of the sweet potatoes no longer appear on the bleeder blades of the mixer like how you see here now let's begin our pie filling we're going to add two large eggs at room temperature and five tablespoons of melted unsalted butter just pour that right on in there now you're going to take your mixer and we're just going to mix this on medium high speed until incorporated just as you see here all right now you're going to scrape down the sides of your bowl now you're going to add one cup of evaporated milk make sure that's at room temperature as well one and one half cups of sugar one tablespoon of vanilla extract and if you're adding lemon extract add about one to two teaspoons of that in there all right one eighth teaspoon of salt one teaspoon of cinnamon one eighth teaspoon of nutmeg one eighth teaspoon of allspice and this next ingredient is optional one fourth cup of all-purpose flour now the flour is being added to thicken stabilize and it improves the pie's texture now i'm gonna go ahead and take my spatula and i'm just going to uh stir this until combined 
if you have a whisk you could also use that as well I don't know why I didn't use it but hey and this is how it looks when we're done now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take my mixer and I'm just going to mix this on medium speed for about 30 seconds all right that looks good <laughs> Yay, yay. Now I'm going to go ahead and scrape down the sides of my bowl and our pie filling is ready. Now I'm going to go ahead and preheat my oven to 350 degrees. Alright, we removed our pie crust from out the freezer. Let it sit in there for about two hours until it's nice and frozen. That's going to ensure even baking. Now we're going to go ahead and add our prepared sweet potato pie filling into our baking pan. Make sure you get a spatula to get that all in there all right now we're going to take our spatula and we're just going to spread that sweet potato pie filling around our baking pan as evenly as possible and to make the batter more even you're going to shake your pan slightly and that's going to help make it even now we're going to go ahead and place this into a preheated 350 degree oven on the bottom rack and we're going to bake it for about one hour and this is how it looks before and this is how it looks after look at that it's beautiful <laughs> now we're going to go ahead and remove our sweet potato pie squares out of the oven after baking on 350 degrees for one hour now if you go ahead and uh, tap your sides of your pan and your pie jiggles slightly in, in the center or if it doesn't jiggle at all that lets us know that our sweet potato pie is done now you're gonna let this cool completely okay all right I let my pie cool completely and now I'm just gonna flip it onto a chopping board onto the opposite side and that's the side looks when we're done as you can see it came right out of the parchment paper and as you can see the bottom is a nice golden brown that lets you know that it's done as well now we're going to flip it onto a cake pad so we're gonna flip it right back over onto a serving cake pad and voila <laughs> now I'm gonna go ahead and take a knife and I'm just going to uh, cut this out into squares it doesn't really matter how you cut it just cut it the best way you can to serve however many people you want to serve all right as you see here that's three squares six nine twelve fifteen squares I didn't cut here total and there you have it ladies and gentlemen homemade sweet potato pie squares made from scratch by a New Orleans native. If you like my channel, hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell button if you want to be notified of my videos. I have an official website for all of my recipes, including this one, www.charliethecookandrews.com. I'm also on Facebook and on Instagram under the name Charlie the Cook Andrews. Stay tuned as Charlie's Taste Test is coming up next. Ah. Now it's time to go ahead and take a bite. Mm -hmm. Man, you can taste the sweet potato. It has a nice sweetness to it, not too sweet, just right. You can taste the flavors of the butter, vanilla, and all the spices that we add. Not overpowering at all, just right. Really, really good. Mm. I'm telling y'all, try the recipe. It's a winner. But you know what the greatest part about this is? Is that I don't have to worry about picking the crust up off the side. You know, like when you eat a regular sweet potato pie, you gotta you gotta worry about the crust falling off and everything. The crust is just right at the bottom. Perfect. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Until next time, take care and I hope you all have a blessed day. Peace.